We're going to wrap up our chapter dealing with fractions it's by solving rational equations and rational inequalities, meaning uh, equations and inequalities that have variables in the top and variables in the bottom. So when you're solving rational equations, you want to go ahead and factor the denominators. Now, sometimes you can't because there's they're pretty much already factored. Find your LCD, the least common multiple of the denominators. Then we need to multiply each fraction, top and bottom, by that special form of 1 so that we can get that common denominator. And then once all the bottoms are the same, we can just solve the top because if all the bottoms of the fractions are the same, then the tops have to be equal. And then we've got to make sure we're checking for extraneous solutions, meaning what causes the bottom to be zero. So as we go ahead and look here, we need to go ahead and factor. Well, to factor, you need to make sure things are written with multiplication. Well, this is multiplication here. So we need to find our LCD, our least common denominator. We have a 3 and we have an M. And that's all the different things that show up. So that's our least common denominator. Our last fraction already has that. We don't have to multiply that by anything. Our fraction just to the right of the equal sign needs an M on the bottom. So if we multiply the bottom by M, we got to multiply the top by M. The fraction on the left needs a 3 on the bottom. And so therefore, I need to put a 3 on the top. So now we can just work with the top. So I'm going to distribute this through. So we get a 3m minus 9 is equal to an m minus 1. And then once we have all the bottoms the same, we just work with the tops, then you can just solve it like a normal equation. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract an m from both sides. And then I'm going to go ahead and add 9 to both sides. And then go ahead and divide by 2, and I get m to be equal to 4. Now, when we're looking at our extraneous solutions, that means uh, it might be an answer that we get from correctly solving it, but doesn't work in the original problem. Your extraneous solutions come from taking your denominator and setting it equal to 0. So extraneous solutions and then solving it. That's your extraneous solution. We, If we had worked it out and gotten zero down there in the black, we would know that that would not work. But since we got something other than zero down there in black, what we have of m being 4 would be our answer. So here, once again, we need to go ahead and factor all the denominators. Then I need to find my LCD. The LCD, least common denominator, would be that K and the K plus 4. Now, you'll notice the last two fractions already have that, so our first fraction just needs that k plus 4 top and bottom. Since all the bottoms are the same, we can just work with the tops. The numerator, so I'm going to distribute through, we get 2k plus 8 plus 1 equals 4. 2k, I'm going to take the 8 and the 1, put them together. Then we can go ahead and uh, subtract 9 from both sides. Then we can go ahead and divide by 2, and we get our answer. We need to make sure we check for those extraneous solutions. So I'm going to take my LCD. So that equal to 0. Set the second one equal to 0, I'd have to subtract 4, I get this. Since what I have in red doesn't match with what I have over there in the blue, the blue would just be your answer. And that's really all we're doing here with our equations. We'll do one more. Remember, this one fraction doesn't have anything in the bottom, it's really over 1. 
So our common denominator, once you have everything factored, which it already is, it's just that 5x. So this needs a 5x top and bottom. Once we have all the bottoms the same, we can just work with the tops. 1 equaling that 5x plus the top of that other fraction. And then we can go ahead and solve this. So we have 1 equal. I'm going to put my x's together. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, take my 2 to the other side. Oh, sorry. I see I screwed up. Because in green, that should be a 5x squared. So it's quadratic, so we have to set it equal to 0 and solve it. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract 1 from both sides. Nope, that would be a minus 3. So then I can go ahead and do my AC factoring. If I go through all the process of AC factoring, I get a 5x minus 3. And I would get an x plus 1. Set each parenthesis equal to 0. I'd have to go ahead and add my 3. Set my other parenthesis equal to 0. And I get these. Now I got to double check my extraneous solutions. And that's what I get when I set my common denominator equal to 0, and I get x to be 0. Since the red doesn't match either one of my answers, my, I actually have two answers right here. So now we're going to go ahead and solve rational inequalities. So to solve rational inequalities, you still need to look for that excluded value or extraneous solution that we were doing. Still need to find your common denominator. Still need to get all the fractions to have that common denominator. Then you want to just work with your inequalities on the top. Now your excluded value, excluded solution, and what you get from step four is solving it. You put them both on a number line, and it divides your number line into regions that work and regions that don't. And so you just have to try a number in each region to see what works and what doesn't. So let's go ahead and look at that. So we need to start off by finding our LCD. Everything's already factored. We have a 3 showing up, we have a 5 showing up, and we have an N showing up. So we need to go ahead and get each fraction to have that. So this one needs a 5 top and bottom. This one needs a 3 top and bottom. This one needs a 5N top and bottom. So now I can just work with the tops. 2 times 5 is 10, plus 4 times 3 is 12, less than 2 times 5 is 10n. I get 22 is less than 10n. And then I solve that, and I get 2.2. I need to find my excluded value or extraneous solution. Um, so I can set my LCD equal to 0. And then I get N to be equal to 0. And then I need to put that on a number line. So I need to put my excluded value on a number line. And I need to put my answer I got from solving it on a number line. Now, I have two numbers on my number line. I have a region to the left, a region in between, and a region to the right. One or two of these regions will likely work. So I'm going to go ahead and try a number over here on the left. So to the left of 0, I'm going to try negative 1. So I'm going to take negative 1 and plug it into the original. And I'm wondering if this is a true statement. So I get negative 2 thirds plus negative 
four fifths. So a negative plus a negative is a negative, and a negative is less than two thirds, a positive two thirds. So I'm going to go ahead and shade over here. Now, since this zero came from my excluded value or excluded solution, that is always going to be an open circle. Now, your other answer will always come from your original inequality, which is going to be a less than or equal to, so we know that that'll be a filled in circle. So now we can go ahead and try a number, say, in between our 0 and 2.2. .2. So I'm going to try 1. So if I plug in 1, I get 2 over 3 plus 4 over 5. And I'm wondering if that's less than or equal to 2 thirds. Um, and when I take 2 thirds and add something to it, it's not less than 2 thirds. So I know that doesn't work. So I'm not going to shade in between. Then I'm going to go ahead and try a number to the right of 2.2. So I'm going to try 3. Plug in 3 into my original problem. I get 2 over 9 plus 4 over 15, less than or equal to 2 thirds. Now, you can go ahead and type that into your calculator. If you look at it as a decimal, you get 0.48 on the left. This is 0.66 on the right, which is less than that. So 0.48 is less than 0.66, so it does work. I tried a number over here, and it works, so that's what I'm going to shade. So now I need to go ahead and write my answer. So when I write my answer for the blue, I'll get n is less than 0. When I write my answer for my red, I am shading to the right. So that's n is greater than or equal to, because it's a filled in dot, 2.2. .2, and then I'm going to put the or statement in between. And that's my answer. So let's try one more just for make sure you're understanding it. So if I write this as a fraction, I can find my excluded value slash excluded solution by setting my LCD, which is just a plus 1 equal to 0, and I get a to be equal to negative 1. Then I'll need to multiply this one here, top and bottom, by an a plus 1 and an a plus 1. And then once all the bottoms are the same, I can work with the tops. And I'm going to distribute my 3 through. Subtract the 3 from both sides, and I get a to be 0. So now I need to put 0 and negative 1 on my number line. Remember, your excluded value is always an open circle. Your one that you got from solving it is always related to this. It's a less or greater than or equal to. It's got that equal to in there, so it's got to be a filled in dot. And so now we got to go ahead and try a number from each region in here to see if it works. So I'm going to go ahead and try a number to the left of the negative 1, like negative 2. If I try negative 2 and plug that in, I'll get 3. Plug in negative 2 plus 1 is a negative 1. And I'm wondering, is that greater than or equal to 0? And, well, a negative 3 on the left is not greater than a positive 3, so we're not going to shade. Then I'm going to go ahead and try something in between. Well, the only thing in between is going to be a fraction, which is not an issue. I'm going to just try negative 1 half. And so I'll try... Plugging in negative one half, negative one half plus one is one half. And I'm wondering, is that greater than or equal to three? And if you type what we have on the left into your calculator, by the way, when you type that in, you'd have to go ahead and put the whole bottom in parentheses. Or you can remember that when you're dividing by a fraction, you multiply by the reciprocal, so you get three times really two over one, or six. And six is greater than Three, so you're going to have to shade in between. Then we could try a number to the right. We could try 1. If I try plugging in 1, I get 3 over 1 plus 1, which is 2. 
and I'm wondering, is that greater than or equal to three? Well, three halves is not greater than or equal to three, so I'm not gonna shade. Your answer is only in between. So when you're shading in between, you gotta put your variable down in between your two numbers. And then with the negative one, it's an open circle, so that would be a less than. With the zero, it's a filled in circle, so it'd be a less than or equal to. So whenever you're shading in between two numbers, you got to have your variable in between your two numbers. So let's go ahead and look at this word problem. So go ahead and read through this. We have a couple of people doing a certain job. One can do the job in seven hours. One can do a job, that same job in five hours, but if they work together, how long is it going to take? So for the most part, we're looking at our rate that they are working at times our time, how long they work at it to give us the work that they get done. Now we're trying to get one job done the rate, well, the rate of this first person, if it takes him seven hours to do uh, one job, each hour he would do one seventh of the job. When we were looking at the other one, if it takes him five hours to do the, a job, he would do one fifth of the hour for per hour, or one fifth of the job per hour for his rate. So we need to go ahead and take the rate to the first person. We don't know how long they're working, so I'm gonna say T. Plus, I need to add in the work of the other person, which would be his rate times T, because that's how long they're working. And so we really have T over seven plus T over five, equal to one over one. Our common denominator ends up being 35. So I multiply the first one top and bottom by five, second one top and bottom by seven. Then I can just work with the tops. So I get five T plus seven T is equal to, oh, I didn't do the right hand side. You gotta remember to do the right hand side. So I got to multiply the bottom by seven and five or 35 and the top. Then I can go ahead and uh, get 35. So I get 12 T on the left when I add these together is equal to 35. So I get T is equal to 35 over 12, um, which is about uh, 2.916 repeating hours. If you wanted to change that into hours and minutes, it would be two hours and then 55 minutes. Whether you leave it with hours and minutes or just in hours would not make a difference.